In the last week of his life, Jesus had to face terrible suffering, but perhaps the hardest experience was to be betrayed by his friends. It is those who are closest to us who have the greatest capacity to hurt us. Judas is remembered for his great betrayal, but Peter and each of the disciples also betrayed Jesus in the fear of Gethsemane. Tonight, we come to face our fears, to recognise our betrayals, and to ask for healing and wholeness, to be reconciled to God, to ourselves, and to one another. Psalm 55, 12 to 14. It is not enemies who taught me. I could bear that. It's not adversaries who deal insolently with me. I could hide from them. But it is you, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend, with whom I kept pleasant company. We walked in the house of God with the throng. Father God, you know the worst in us, our fearful betrayals, our weakness and our frailty. Yet you go on trusting us. Quieten our hearts and minds as we still our bodies. Slow our breathing and open ourselves to you. just to help us to still ourselves. We're gonna sing that lovely song, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Be still, for the Holy One is here.
Mark chapter 14, verses 10 to 11, and verses 17 to 21, taken from The Voice. It was after this that Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to meet the chief priests with the intention of betraying Jesus to them. When they heard what he proposed, they were delighted and promised him money. So from that time on, Judas thought and waited and sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. That evening, Jesus and the twelve arrived and went into the upper room and each reclined around the table, leaning upon an elbow as he ate. I tell you, in absolute sincerity, one of you eating with me tonight is going to betray me. The twelve were upset. They looked around at each other. Lord, it's not I, is it? It is the one of you, the twelve, one of you who is dipping your bread in the same dish that I am. The Son of Man goes to his fate that has already been predicted in the scriptures, but still it will be terrible for the one who betrays him. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Listen to these words. Have you ever been betrayed? Are you afraid of being betrayed? We think of the many ways that we can betray the trust of others. In relationships, through infidelity. In friendship, when we let someone down. In business, when we serve our own interests. At work, when people are overlooked or treated badly. In our Bible reading, we hear of Judas's betrayal of Jesus. It's so hard to understand his motives. Was it money, the 30 pieces of silver, or the money Judas was said to have taken from the common purse? Was it power, wanting to be on the winning side and not to get caught with the losers? Or did Judas feel that he would force Jesus' hand and begin the rebellion? In the end, the motives don't really matter. The betrayal happens. Of course, Judas isn't the only one who betrays Jesus. All the disciples let him down. Filled with fear, they run away, and Peter even denies knowing him. It is fear that is behind most of their betrayal on that fateful evening. Fear can bring out the worst in us. It can undermine our confidence, our best selves, and leave us to act in ways we deeply regret. Fear of growing older can lead to a midlife crisis. Fear of hardship can lead to a betrayal of trust. Fear of losing status can lead to selfish actions. Something for you to think of as we sing together now. Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing.
hear from Judas Iscariot on that fateful night of shame. Do what you have to do. He told me that. And I realised then as he looked at me with those eyes, with the expression deep in his eyes, that he knew full well what I'd been up to. And he understood precisely what I'd planned for later that evening. Call me a fool. But up to that point I thought I'd covered my tracks well. Played the part of the doting disciple. And I was right to a point. For my fellow apostles fell for it hook, line and sinker. You should have seen their faces. When Jesus suddenly turned during supper and solemnly announced that one of us would betray him. Who is it, Lord? Surely not I. They actually believed it might be. As much as one of them as me. Not Jesus, though. I realised the moments that he looked at me there was no pulling the wool over his eyes. He saw through my charade, behind the lamb to the wolf, beneath the dove to the serpent. And suddenly, I was ashamed of what I'd done, sickened by what I was doing, Disgusted at what I'd become. I should have stopped it there and then. Confessed everything before them all and begged for mercy. But I didn't. I was too proud. Afraid of losing face. Terrified of what Caiaphas might do to me. If I fail to deliver the goods. So I. I slithered out of the room. Leaving the rest of them wide eyed in disbelief. It still wasn't too late even then. I could have called a halt to the whole business. I only wish I had. But I didn't. I led the soldiers into the garden. I greeted Jesus with a kiss. That last revolting act, that repulsive It was bad enough betraying a friend. But what made it worse was that we had he eaten together just a short time before. He he'd washed my feet, shared the bread and the wine with me, kept faith with me to the very last. Despite everything. If he had only cursed me, accused me, rebuked me, it would have made it much easier. If he had only shown some sign of resentment, maybe then I could have lived with myself, knowing he wasn't so perfect after all. But there was none of that. A hint of sorrow? Perhaps. But apart from that, only love, compassion, forgiveness. 
He knew what was happening, yet it made no difference. He knew. He knew that I was leading him to his death. And he carried on regardless. Why? Why? You tell me! I only hope he had more idea what he was doing than I had. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you know our deepest fears and hurts, our darkest secrets, our least attractive traits. Yet you choose to trust us and to love us. You choose to see the best that we can be. Help us to face our hurts and fears and trust you with them. Help us and others to inhabit the best of ourselves, to live up to your confidence in us. And when we do fail, when we do betray ourselves and others, forgive us. And help us start again. Amen. Maybe that you just want to listen or you want to sing along to the beautiful song by Don Moen when it's all been said and done. When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for true? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done My treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time
Now let us hear from Peter, who's in turmoil. He warned me it would happen. He told me exactly how it would be. But I just didn't believe it. If he had said anyone else, I would have thought otherwise. I mean, you can't trust anyone finally, can you? Not even your friends. And to be honest, I expected a few of them to cave in when the pressure was on. But me, me, I felt different. It was me after all, who he called to be his first disciple. Me, who he realized he was the Messiah when the rest were still groping around in the dark. Me, he called the rock. And I thought, I thought deep down I was just that. Unshakable, firm, dependable. I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else, just that my faith always seemed stronger. So I told him confidently, proudly, for all else fail you, I will not. Lord, I'm ready to die for you. God, how those words haunt me now. How stupid they make me feel. If only I'd kept my mouth shut. If only I hadn't been so full of myself. If only I'd had more courage. We all failed him. All of us in our own way. They look at me and they say, he denied him. They talk of Judas and they say, he betrayed him. They point at the others and say they abandoned him. Well, let them judge if they want to. Let them imagine that they're a cut above the rest. I've learned the hard way. I'm not. Just to help us in our thinking, we're going to sing 715 in the songbook, Knowing My Failings. For I'm sure for all of us, there have been times when we know we haven't quite hit the mark. Let's just take these moments to reflect as we sing this song through together.
Imagine the heartache, the despair of Jesus knowing what he has witnessed in the hours before and knowing what is ahead. Sit here while I pray. The sorrow in my heart is great. It almost crushes me. Stay here. Keep watch over me. Father, I have shown your glory on earth. I finished the work that you gave me. I have given my disciples your message. And the world, it hated them. Yet I, I don't pray that they may be taken out of the world. I pray that they may be kept from evil. Sleeping Peter, can you not even keep awake for an hour? Father, not only my friends, but all who believe in their words, I pray that there may be one, just as you and I are one. Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and they know you, so that the world may believe that you sent me. May they be one. May they be one. Peter, keep watch and pray. Don't be drawn by temptation. The Spirit is willing. But oh, the flesh. The flesh is weak. Father, if it is possible, Father, if it is possible, take away this cup of suffering from me. Take away this cup of suffering from me. But let it not be what I want. Let it be what you want. Are you still sleeping? Are you still taking your ease? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to sinful people. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is going to betray me. Just to help us in these moments, we're going to hear the very beautiful words of there is a green hill. And as it is sung, just try to place yourself in the garden. How would you have been on that night? Would you, like the other disciples, have been weak? Just consider as we hear these words.
final prayer. Lord, you call us to be your voices in this world and we stay silent. You call us to be your hands in this world and we keep them hidden. You call us to be your feet in this world and we go our own way. When we meet those who are doubting and say nothing, forgive us. When we meet those who need your touch and do nothing, forgive us. When we are called to take up your cross and carry nothing, forgive us. Breathe life into these bones, bring freedom to these lives, that we might declare with heart and soul and voice that you are our Lord and our God. Amen. <laughs>